up, guys? Welcome to today's class. Super excited to have all of you guys logging in. Make sure if you uh, get a chance, here's uh, Sarah, she's just standing there. Uh, let me put this up here. Uh, we're together now. Um, welcome to the show, guys. Super excited to have you guys on here live. Uh, make sure that you check in with us. If you're an OG, you've been watching this for a long time, type OG in the chat. If you're new to the show, you've never watched any of our live streams before, type new in the chat. And then also, you guys know the drill. If you understand, uh, anything like our shop, where our shop is, where our, what our app is, what an ergo brush is, type it in the chat, uh, get involved. Let's grow this room as big as we can. Um, I've got Sarah Mack here live with me today. Um, we're going to see how these technical issues go. You guys know this, you know the drill, you know the drill. So Sarah, can you hear me? I guess is the first question. Negative. So <laughs> this is, let me see. So she's going to call back. This is how it works. You guys know it. We're going to have some fun today. Uh, Ergo is going to go through and they're going to share some different styling uh, tips and techniques with you guys. Um, so here we go. Let me get her in here. What's up? <laughs> hey. <laughs> Piece of cake, right? <laughs> I don't know. It keeps kicking me out. <laughs> I, I know. Um, <laughs> so I'm not sure why, but uh, let's see. Can you hear me? And uh, are you ready to roll? All right. So you just do your I intro. Am. Why don't you tell us who you are, what's going on today, and we'll go from there and we'll just take this as it goes. All right. <laughs> well, like I told Matt before, it would not be a class in 2021 without a little technical difficulties. So thank you so much for bearing with us. Um, I want to start off by saying thank you so much to Matt for having me, my name is Sarah Mack, and Ergo Styling Tools today on Free Salon Education. We are such a huge fan of Free Salon Education, everything that you do for our industry. So I want to start off by saying thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. And thank you for everyone tuning in or taking the time to watch this video. We truly, truly appreciate it. We wouldn't be here without all of you, the hairdressers, this industry. It's amazing. So my name is Sarah Mack, and just like most of you, I am a hairstylist behind the chair. I reside in Southern California, and I have my own studio, and then I'm also an artistic educator for Ergo Styling Tools. So today I want to share with you a little bit about our tools. I want to talk about power dry. I want to talk about body positioning and how important that is uh, to our industry and to you the stylist and the longevity in your career. And I also wanna show you one of our signature techniques, which is called set, lock and lift. So that is what we have in store for you. Um, I have been behind the chair for 15 years now. And so I noticed right around year five, I actually had to, I started to have a little problems with my wrist and my shoulder, just like many new stylists into the industry. And back then we didn't have social media. so. I definitely didn't have as much education at the start of my career as many people have access to now. So I think that's really awesome. And so, yeah, I started to have a lot of problems and I actually met Robert Reed, the founder of Ergo Styling Tools, and I learned so much from him and just everything he stands for and why he created this line for hairstylists. He truly, truly cares about the industry you as a hairstylist. So our line is created by hairstylists for hairstylists. So that is the first thing I love about Ergo Styling Tools. So let me jump right into our tools and what, we, um, what we're kind of like known for, but also um, I'll share a little bit what we also have in our whole regimen over here at Ergo Styling Tools. But if you have never seen an Ergo Styling Tool, we this is our signature round brush. And so let me just talk a little bit why I love this round brush. I've used many round brushes throughout my 15 years. And I know Matt's a fan too, so we really appreciate that. And yes. the first thing, <laughs> the first thing, and also I should mention, if if there's any questions at any time, I'm sure I didn't get to hear Matt's intro, but if you have a question, hit Q and then ask your question. Matt will pop it up for me. Um, also, too, if you think of the question later after the live, you can come find us on Ergo Styling Tools on Instagram. 
and ask us anything or email us, or you can ask Matt too. I'm sure he doesn't want all of the questions um, to forward on to us, but please come connect with us. We love to connect with hairdressers. So wanted to make that disclaimer. Let me start off with our round brush. And the first thing you see is that this is all black. So honestly, one of my favorite things, I am that hairstylist all black every day, all day. So I, I just, love like the look right off the bat because it's really professional looking uh then also one thing you might notice is that the length of this i don't know i don't have another one to compare it to but the length of our brush is a little bit longer than most round brushes on the market especially our barrel and i'll talk about that when we get into set lock and lift why that is really nice feature to have on these round brushes okay the next thing you are going to notice is that we do have a silicone handle and these really nice grip so when in those first five years i did work with a different um a couple different kinds of brushes and i think part of the problem why my wrist start to went like go uh oh i feel it's never it's never good when you hear the uh oh are you there i am i don't think you know this <laughs> um she's probably gonna get cut guys uh real quick she'll be back Frozen. this is how it goes um i'm not sure why so let me go here before okay. she okay. before she starts um This is where we get to decide. This is the fun part about these lives, guys. And we'll just, this will be our little secret as we, uh, as we go through this class today. Um, she'll be back. And Sarah, let me know if you can hear me. But what we try to see is if she starts cursing before, because uh, she doesn't know she's on camera. We'll see. She doesn't know she's there. I can still see her, but you guys can't. Are you there? Yes. I'm going to hang up. No, she left. All right, she'll be back. So, guys, here's the deal. We we do this breakup. I'm going to figure this out by next week, I promise. Uh, this is going to be, like, the highlight of my weekend is trying to figure this out for you guys. But, uh, you know, we just do little commercial breaks, and then we bring <laughs> Sarah right back in. So, Sarah, here's the deal. I have a feeling Boom. this is going to happen multiple times, and it's okay. Let's just yeah. – we'll work through it. We're going to figure this out for next time for sure because I don't know why this happens. Yes. But – Keep going. Keep doing your thing. You're a pro. All right. All right. All right. Thanks. I took the opportunity during the commercial break just to grab all the brushes <laughs> for <laughs> you guys so that um, next you can see that we have five. Let me get these in order. Um, we have five different sizes of the rounds. So it starts with our smallest and it's called an ER25 and it goes all the way up to our big daddy, which is also on back order. So you might have to wait till March for this one, but five different sizes. Then let me talk about um, the barrel. So this barrel is coated in ceramic, which is gonna give you a nice even heat distribution across the barrel. The bristles are made of carbon and tourmaline. And if you've never seen tourmaline, but, oh, Okay, I'm still there. Okay, black tourmaline. This is black tourmaline. It's actually one of my favorite minerals. I use it in a lot of things, but this is a mineral. And what it does is the way the bristles are made is it creates a negative charge. Oh gosh, I'm probably gonna mix this up now. And our hair is positively charged. So it, it creates a charge, one on the bristles that are is opposite of our hair. So think of a magnet so when the hair and the brush come together it's opposite attract and what that's going to do is that's nicely going to shut down the cuticle for us which we know when our cuticle is all the way closed it gives us that nice shiny beautiful anti-humidity like that beautiful beautiful blowout so the round is going to help you there the other last thing I want to say about this round brush, and this is one of my biggest things when I first came into the industry that I struggled with, is that when you're round brushing, round brushing, and when, oh gosh, it's just the worst thing when my client, when I accidentally hurt my client in any way, whether it's shampooing or when I was round brushing their hair, 
And like, I instantly get this sick feeling in my stomach if they go, oh, or if it like anything like that. And so I can remember before or go using different round brushes where the hair would possibly get caught here, right at this connection or in the end cap. And it's just like the worst when you just like rip out like one or two of their little hairs. So I love this round brush because it has a um, seamless uh, cap here. It's recessed into the barrel. So you're not going to get any snagged hairs here. And then the barrel is also seamless here. So it's just really, really nice for that. Then really quickly, I want to go into our few, our paddles. Um, Matt, I, I watch your videos all the time. So I am personally a big flat wrapper as well. So I absolutely <laughs> love these. And then of course I have short hair. So this guy is my best friend. This is called our diamond head. And I absolutely love this for my men's clients and for flat wrapping short hair. It gets really nice into the nape area, into the fringe. Um, and then we also have our classic polishing paddle. So a couple things with the polishing paddle. I'm going to start off right off the bat just because it is 2021 and we are still in a pandemic. We all know behind the chair how important it is to disinfect our tools like more than ever. Trust me, I travel around the world. I see the educators that aren't cleaning out their brushes. So you guys, we all know how important it is this year. And with this polishing paddle right here, it has two awesome features, which are, it's gonna look like when you see this brush that a pin is missing, but that's actually a drain hole because that's another thing. Sometimes with paddle brushes, they don't have the drain holes. And then what happens when you go to disinfect this or submerge it in your quats, and then you know you can shake it around and you hear all that liquid in there. So it's awesome because there's a drain hole here and then there's actually, I'm like a beauty vlogger, there's a drain hole <laughs> at the end there. And so after you quaff it, you can you know lay it out to dry or lay it down this way and it should completely dry out the inside, which is super important. The next thing you will notice, and just like the uh, round brushes, these pins are also infused with carbon and tourmaline. So you're going to still get that beautiful shine. Yep. I'm frozen. <laughs> and she's frozen. But she's not, but she is. Let's see. All right, I'm going to go to me while she figures it out. Um, Talk to you guys for a sec. Let's see, what do we got? Who do we got in the chat here? Jocelyn, I see your question there. Uh, I'm actually just gonna have Sarah call back. Uh, I see your question, so I will, I'll get that uh, up to Sarah as soon as she's back on here. Um, where do we get the brushes? You can get them at Shop FSE, which is our online store, Shop Free Salon Education. Here she is. What's up? <laughs> okay, so what I've tried, how's the pick? I've tried disconnecting from the internet now, so maybe that will help and just going off service. So, all right, um, let's see. Is the picture still okay? Yeah, yeah, it looks good. Awesome. Okay, so we, so we did have one question, Sarah. So I do want to, because awesome. I think what happened was when you got cut off last time, you were going mm -hmm. into more of what, how it helped your wrist. So, oh, jo yes. Yeah, so Jocelyn was asking about that. I think that's a good uh, tip. If you want to go into that. Yeah. So with the wrist, when I was using, um, you're right. I, when I used to use different handles that didn't necessarily have this kind of grip, I used to actually also use some, um, and I'll probably be like, you know, half the viewers are going to be like, I love the wood handles. But for me personally, when it was a wood handle without the grip, I don't know. I just had a really hard time turning it in my hand. Uh, so I, that's just one thing that I love about this grip. Sometimes you still have moisture in the hair and you have wet hands or, you know, you can get a little water on the brush. And so I love the silicone grip one because the longevity of the handle, in my opinion, lasts a little bit longer. And for my wrist, it's just so much easier because when we're round brush blow drying uh, all the time, 
we have these little micro movements and I just felt with like a different handle, I had to work even harder at moving or rotating the brush when I needed to. And so those little micro movements over time, you know, they wear and tear down on your body. Just like I do have a little bit of shoulder things because I was a softball pitcher like all the way when I was growing up, national champion when I was 10, but you know, I got a little wear and tear on my shoulder from that like constant motion. So same thing when we're round brushing and I love working behind the chair. So I want to be able to do it for a long time. So I just started to research and look for methods that would help me in every little single way possible. So I hope that answers your question. It was mostly about the grip. Yeah, I think that was good. Okay, awesome. Okay, so back to our paddles and I'll talk about the pins next. So another thing uh, with our pins is that these are molded, it's a single mold. So with the pin itself. So you'll see that there's like the little, just like most paddle brushes, we have the little tip. And sometimes with the way that um, these pins are molded, the tips and the pins will be molded separately and then placed together. This is one single mold, so you're not gonna get these little tips breaking off over time, which again, gives you a longevity in the brush. And then also it's just really nice on the scalp, standard. And then when the brush is turned this way, you're gonna see that the pins are not lined up. There's like a row and they're gonna kind of zigzag. So when we are blow drying this way, when we have our paddle horizontal, then we're gonna be able to get more tension on the hair because the pins are misaligned. Now, I love using this paddle for detangling as well. So when you turn the brush vertical, so straight up and down, you're gonna be able to see that, see, you can almost see perfectly down, if I could get this lined up, perfectly down, and they're really nicely lined up. This is gonna be perfect for detangling. So multifunctional, I love to flat wrap with this on long hair too. If I'm going to dry cut on straight hair, it's just perfect setup for me. So if there's no questions on those, I'm going to move into, let's talk about power drying next actually, because you probably are ready to see me get into some hair. Let's move her up a little bit. Obviously too, like body position, we're gonna talk a little bit about body position and all that. One thing I struggled with also at the beginning of my career was one, well, because at the beginning too, you're like trying to learn all of the things with all of your tools. So you don't really think about moving your client up and down, right? Like taking time to move up and down. But it's so important to actually get your client or your mannequin if you're practicing in your downtime, you no know, sitting at the back table. That's a big pet peeve of mine uh, when you are starting out is. You should always be working on something, always figuring out, or at least watching one of Matt's videos over on Free Salon Education. And so if you're working on your mannequin or your client, get her in the right spot. That's where I go off on tangents. So hey, we'll appreciate that. that. <laughs> oh no. That's okay. This is my favorite because <clears throat> she doesn't, I, she can't hear me, but. Um, I just love the, uh, the, oh no, part. Really got to get this fixed. We did this with Ben Brown too. So it's obviously just an issue with this. I don't know, but you guys are the best. Thank you for hanging in there. Sarah Mack. <laughs> so wasn't the Wi-Fi. Okay. Nope. So we're going to move in. I'm not sure where I cut out. Um, but we're gonna talk about body positioning next. And I went off on a tangent, so it was probably good that I got cut off. <laughs> I tend to do that um, on all my little things that come to my brain. But next we're gonna talk about body position and just how important it is to get you set up. And I wanna talk about um, like just the way we hold our blow dryers. Now I'm probably gonna get half the viewers mad at me again when they see me tell them, please do not hold your, your blow dryer this way. So if anyone does, like I, guess I said, 
to each their own. It's just not recommended for longevity in your career because what that's doing is it's putting all the weight at the back and it's putting, again, more pressure on your wrists and those micro movements and you going back and forth. And then two, with that, sometimes these blow dryers, like the tip of your blow dryer gets up to 400, 500 degrees. So it's just like more chances of you burning yourself. Uh, this is our TT Twin Turbo 2000. This blow dryer is in our po portfolio. And I really love this. I've used it, honestly, my whole career. I used to, my first assisting job. I was really lucky because I found Ergo like I was using Ergo tools pretty early on because the guy I assisted for was using Ergo. So it's awesome. I've had this blow dryer almost my whole entire career. And what I love about it is that it's a shorter barrel. Um, so you can get, I don't know, it just makes it more ergonomic, honestly, because you don't have to get your arms so far away with a longer barrel, if that makes sense. So you can stay a little bit more here, like in your powerhouse. And then, you know, the weight is nicely distributed across the barrel so that it's nice and ergonomic. I'm probably going to use that word a lot because <laughs> ergo, it just, it just goes with it. Okay, so I want to talk about power drying. Like I said, I'm a stylist behind the chair. I also do work on photo shoots. I mean, I've been on big campaigns and stuff. So there are times when we blow dry from, you know, straight from the shampoo bowl to dry without a power dry. Totally, totally just need to know the situation. Also, I wouldn't recommend power drying, of course, on curly, frizzier hair because when we try to power dry curly, frizzy hair, that's just going to actually ruffle up that kind of cuticle even quicker. And it's going to cause you to have to work harder on the back end. But if your clientele is like mine, which I, again, I travel all over, I see everybody's clientele. Um, so most people have a fine to medium hair strand, and then they have like a medium, actually like a, a thinner to medium density. It depends on, I mean, of course, there's a couple of, of exceptions, like, you know, in Miami, there's a lot of thick hair over in Miami. And some areas, um, Texas, they have a lot of thick hair too, but it just depends, right? So a lot of my clients are, they have a finer hair strand, medium density. So I love to, just like many hairstylists, shortcut anything I can. Because at the end of the day too, like not only is it about our body position, or not body position, but like the longevity of our career, but I'm sorry, we are there to make money. So the more, especially with COVID and not being able to double book anymore, it's really, you still want to give your client like an exceptional blowout and like an amazing service and leave every client leaving, like leaving your chair feeling special, but you also don't want to spend hours on end finishing their hair. So this is just one technique, again, very situational. You have to know your client's hair where I utilize power drying to cut down on my overall service time, which allows me to get more clients into my chair, which allows me to make more money. Um, so one thing you'll notice, I, I am going to have to turn on the blow dryer, so that might be a little bit annoying. I won't talk during it, and it will be short verse, but I'm going to set this up for you. One thing we focus on uh, at Ergo when we are drying hair is that we start with, like, if you take a section of hair, and I'm just going to hold it up for you. This first inch is, either, you can call it section one, two, three, a, B, C, roots, mid lengths, ends, however you want to phrase it. And he can't hear. All right, so let's take this time. She's blow drying. Let's take this time to talk about freesaloneducation.com's app, FSE Now. She'll be calling back. Um, FSE Now, you can download the app for free. We got tons of education on there. None of it cuts out <laughs> like this. All right, Sarah's back. Here we go. All right, so I think I left off on, you can phrase it, 
roots, mid lengths, yep. ends, A, B, C, however you want to go about it. So I like to say we make sure the roots are dry first and then before you move on to the mid lengths, which is B, and then ends are last. Now, when I power dry, I honestly don't power dry the ends at all. And that's because ends are porous anyways. So they're going to dry out on their own and just being like blown around a little bit. Naturally, they will dry out as quick as mid lengths. So I really, when I'm power drying, I actually mostly focus on roots. And I move the hair all around. You're going to see me move the hair all around in different directions. If I want to create a lot of volume in this, my final blowout, then I'm going to move the hair forward and really focus on these roots. That way, when I am working on my blowout and this comes back over, I've already created some lift in my power dry. Now, if she wants something flat and sleek, you're going to put her on her part and start power drying her into position that way. Okay. Another thing you're going to see me do, you're not going to see me blowing the hair all over. Again, I want to aid in closing the cuticle down instead of ruffling it up even more. So everything's to go quicker, save time. So you're gonna see me work around the head. One last thing you're gonna see me do when I do this is everything needs to stay when it comes to body positioning. I like to think of it like from collarbone. I think this is like, you know how there's like a strike zone for any of my sports fans? Of course, I grew up playing softball. So, you know, there's a strike zone, right? So for me, it's like here, is I want to keep working in my strike zone. Okay, this is going to be the best for my body, my elbows, my shoulders, my wrists. Another thing um, which you can't really see me do right now, but I tend to um, put whatever leg is hold or whatever arm is holding my blow dryer, that leg tends to go a little bit forward. Uh, if anyone, uh, yeah, I don't really actually know how I was going to phrase that, but You'll also see me switch hands. So when I want to power dry on this side, but I want the hair moving away, like how am I going to turn, you know, like this looks, it's so funny. So another thing we really have to work on when you want to become a better styler and finisher is being ambidextrous, which means you can use both of your hands either way. I do tend to hold it, uh, the blow dryer in my right hand the most. But you'll see me when I come to this left side, switch hands and start to move this hair. I'm not going to do this for very long. So this is going to be a very quick version of my power dry. But I just want you to see the mechanics of it. So turn your volume down on three, two, one. Sound back up. Again, very quick version, but it shouldn't take you too long. Don't be afraid to put, use your hands. Like I love my tools, but I think sometimes as hairstylists, we forget that these are like some of our most useful and uh, powerful tools. So in this power dry, don't be afraid to put a lot of um, a little bit of tension into their hair. It's also great because this feels, I mean, think about it. If someone's like massaging your head or pulling on your hair, it like gets them to relax and hopefully quiet down and stop talking. That way you don't have to pretend to talk over the blow dryer and sh shake your head. Uh-huh. When you, they tell you something and you have no idea what they're saying. So it just gets them to relax. Again, it's adding to the client experience. I'm all about the experience. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it with that. And then I would move into the mid lengths and ends. So moving on next thing that we're going to talk about is sectioning. So sectioning is also stylist preference. And it, I think it also depends on the density of hair. So density is the amount of strands that they have on their head. So obviously if that's,
All righty. So let me see here. Popping back up. I don't know why Skype's there. Doesn't need to be. Here we go. The app, somebody was asking, it's FSE now. FSE now. Um, right here, you can see. Pop it on there. So if you go to the app store, you can download it. Um, this class will also be remastered <laughs> into a uh, smaller version. So we'll cut out all of these little uh all of these little disconnections and we will put it into a smaller video. So Sarah, this will be salvaged and yeah, and everybody likes it. (laughs) I gotta be honest. People, you think it's annoying. It seems annoying, but people actually kind of enjoy it because it's real. Yeah. It's not too big of a break. (laughs) It's nice on my end because I have a second to actually like wrap my brain around what I'm actually doing over here. Yeah. We have started. Go ahead. I don't know if you saw the Ben Brown uh, class, but for some reason it was that was happening with him, uh, which is why I got to figure this out. But he he was like, at least I get to drink. He was like drinking a Pepsi every time he was like, <laughs> every time That's it would cut awesome. out. So here we go. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I was talking about density and sectioning. Um, I actually took a poll recently on my Instagram. So if we're not connected on Instagram and you want to connect with me, I also love talking to people. It's uh, Sarah Mac original over on Instagram. That's where you can find me most of the time. But I took a poll over there the other day asking if people pre-section and clip away. It was about 50-50. Again, it's situational, right? So if they have a lot of density, which means they have a lot of strands on their head, doesn't matter about the texture, then a lot of times it's going to save you time if you just take the extra, probably in real, in realistically two minutes i'm gonna keep sectioning actually while i talk to pre-section this away again it's just going to give you control and kind of give you a roadmap so i'm sure matt you have a roadmap right when you are going to start a haircut and it's the same way whether it's color styling or haircutting you're going to have a roadmap you're not going to like pull out of your house to go on vacation and have no, you know, end destination in mind, you're going to have, you know, a plan of attack. It's the same thing behind the chair. Again, whether you're cutting, styling or finishing. I think a lot of people just think sectioning is for haircutting, but and then there's some haircuts where you don't section at all. So same thing. So all I uh, like to do, this is after my power dry too. So they're still, and I should mention in my power dry, I aim to get the hair dry about 80%. That way there's enough moisture left in the hair that when I unwrap these pre-sections that I don't have too many kinks or anything in the hair. And I'll adjust the camera in just a second when I actually start blow drying. So you'll see see that I started with a horseshoe section. I will say this horseshoe section is a little bit more narrow than like if you were, it's more narrow than your parietal ridge. And the reason uh, for that is because this is where we're gonna talk about the length of the barrel. So you don't want the horseshoe section, say that five times fast, uh, to be wider than your brush barrel. Uh, again, same thing as cutting. I love how everything crosses over. You're not going to take a section in your hands and cut past your knuckle. Um, so it's the same thing. It's all for control and to get a really nice end result. So again, there, and then straight from there, I like to just go straight down, down the ear. And then we're going to just divide this back section and you can use a comb here, a clip. I tend to use clips. Everybody has an opinion on it. Um, let's see, and I'll turn. I'll get this girl turned for us. And then this is going to be a section here. And I'm going to also move the camera, and I'll tilt it a little bit down for us. So I'm gonna put a clip there. And then I'm not gonna, um, well, okay, so it depends on which blowout I'm doing, but if I'm starting from the bottom and working up, then I'm not gonna clip this away. But if I'm starting from the top, which is what I do with set, lock, and lift, I start from the top and I'll explain why, then I do clip this away because I'm gonna work obviously from the bottom down. Now, just because I am gonna work set, lock, and lift from the bottom down, doesn't mean you have to. Uh, One thing, 
that you'll learn um, with me is that I don't think there's an absolute to anything. So I just like to share with Silas what works for me. Sorry, closing that power button. Uh, and then you're going to take some nuggets with you that you find applicable to how you style hair. And you're going to change some things too. That's what it's all about. I, I don't really think there's one way to do anything. Brock, I need a charge. Oh, thanks. You're right there. Because <laughs> it's reconnecting right now. Oh. Yeah, it just disconnected. Okay. I mean, it works out because it there gives we me. Go. She's, she's getting it fixed. Hey, thank you guys for uh, staying with us. I understand that this is going through it. Here's the thing that I love about all these different tips before she gets back on here is the fact that guys, there's so much to break down in blow drying before you actually blow dry. All of us know how to take a section, pull it up in the air. What you guys got to understand is all the little tiny details that Sarah's putting in there uh, are really valuable. So just uh, grab those little things and add them to your blow dry. All right. Got you back. Yes. Thank you. Sweet. Yes. Thank you for that. Yep. Um, yeah, they're just, yeah, my little tips and tricks. And I learned that, like, I've had so many mentors throughout the years. And it's so funny because I'm like a hybrid of my mentors, right? Or things that I learn online, you take some things with you. And my thing is, if I can just share one thing that you could take home, I, that's a win for me and hopefully a win for you. Yeah, so this I is went the thing ahead, too, Sarah. So I, wanna, yeah. I just want to kind of, I, I like to see like what the audience is doing and kind of address because people, I feel like people get like impatient in a way. And, and I try yeah. to like preach to be a little more patient because the, the amount of little things that we've gone over, like that's what really separates. Like what I think separates a good hairdresser and a great one are those tiny little details. And so everybody, I was saying like, everybody knows how to, to grab a section and pull it up and blow it dry. Like that to me mm -hmm. is like, okay, cool. Basics. We got it. But like, the tiny like body position and sectioning and, you know, going through all of that and, and what you're about to share now, you got to know all those little things before you can pick hair up, whether you're cutting yeah. it or coloring it, whatever it is, you got to understand those little details. So people that get impatient, it's like, well, what are you trying to learn? Do you just want to know how to pick it up? Because that's not understanding the why behind yes. everything that we do. So I think it's super cool. And I know you're about to throw in a tip here. So, uh, but I yes. want people to understand that are in the chat that you got to have those little details, then you build on that. And now we're going to go into uh, blow drying. Yes. And I know that everyone wants to see hair done. Yeah. I trust me, I've been doing this a right. long time. It's best to get right into hair. I totally understand. Um, yeah. But like Matt's saying, it is really important. And those are actually the things that I wish someone would have shared with me. And then instead of me having to take 15 years to learn every single little detail along yeah. the way, um, so yes, thank you. And thank you all for being patient and playing along. Now, let me show you set lock and lift. This is one of our signatures and let's see, I'm going to turn her this way. So my arms aren't in the way and you're not going to see the rest of her head just because it's not that important. Anyways, you're going to see the important part and you might not see the top of my head, but also not a problem. So first thing was set lock and lift, um, that we like to do is I start in this U-shaped section or horseshoe set shape section and I start from the back of it and that's because I want to create this look is like that you know that Victoria's Secret runway look when it's all done and I have a mannequin back there so don't worry you don't have to watch me blow dry this whole mannequin back there with the finish set and we're going to take her down together and you'll see the end result but it's that Going to give you that nice volume in the crown that beautiful bouncy curl this is the technique we use for that so i'm going to use because she has actually i'm going to um, brush i'm going to go down one brush on this mannequin who has longer hair i use our er43 because i do want a lot of revolutions for her she's a little bit shorter it's an erica so i'm going to go with our er35 and first thing we do is we pre-groom the hair. Again, just a fancy word for we comb out the knots. So I'm just pre-grooming the hair. Again, you're gonna see my blow dryer is in my right hand. So I have my right foot a little bit forward. Everything why I start back here is because I'm gonna over direct this. So 
I'm going to move up to this section, then this one, then this one. If I started here, now I'm over directing this back section into my already set curl. So I start at this back one, I pre groom, and then I'm going to over direct forward, wrap the hair around like that. And then you're going to see me twist down. Now that's the lock, the set and the lock. So let me do that one more time and I'm going to turn her towards you a little bit. So you can really see it from this angle, pre groom, pre groom. And then I'm using my pinky here and then wrap, 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 wrap. It's locked. And now I'm going to lock it down. So you'll see me rotate down. I'm going to keep my wrist nice and straight there. I'm going to keep my wrist nice and straight as possible over here. And I'm going to start to blow dry these roots. So here we go. Blow dryer on volume down. Okay. It's never good when she says, oh my God. I'm popping in. She's going to go away. All right. This commercial break is brought to you by Daily Harvest. Get your greens while you wait for something to come back on. Oh. <laughs> uh, here we go. Hello. Okay. Welcome back. I'm back. <laughs> okay. So when um, I feel that it's getting dry, I can do a quick temperature check with my pinky and my ring finger on my off hand, my blow dryer hand. And like I said, this is why on this one, I especially power dry because we all know like sometimes if we have the brush all the way down here in other sections, it's really hard to get the blow dryer into that root area. And that's going to be your number one cause of not keeping the volume in the hair is if you only get the root area, root is where you get all your control on volume. So if you don't pre dry and then you only blow dry the root because you're in a rush or their scalp is getting too hot and you only get it 90% dry, especially if you were in Florida and you go out into that humidity, now that's just going to be wet again in any kind of humidity and it's going to frizz back out and it's going to fall flat. So when we don't get it dry enough, that is why hair, it still has moisture in the hair. You may not feel it really, but you really want to make sure it's nice and dry. So when I feel like that is nice and dry, if it's coming loose, I can rewrap. I'm going to slightly roll out now and start to work on my mid lengths. You're going to see that I never touch the tip of the blow dryer and especially near the root area, I keep my blow dryer kind of moving and I'm not um, flicking my wrist. Again, micro movements in the wrist. I'm moving my whole arm, okay? So that my wrist is staying as straight as possible and preserving my carpal tunnel, which I don't have anymore. I should have said that before. So after I really learned about body positioning and everything, my wrist is totally fine now. I work 12 hours a day three days a week, two to three days a week. So, and I can make it and I don't have an assistant anymore. So I am on my own. Okay. Roots are dry. Now I'm going to roll out and start to blow dry those mid lengths. I am moving with the cuticle when I am drying and moving this blow dryer. Again, we're trying to close down that cuticle, create shine. Not sure where the sound went there. Oh. <laughs> nope. She doesn't know, so I got to hang up on her. I should just talk and just let her, just say exactly what she's doing. I do love this technique. I'm just going to hang up so then she calls back and then that way we don't have any problems. But I do love this technique. I love the, the idea of wrapping it around and then adding the heat in. What do you guys think? Let me know in the chat. Um, let's see. Her hair color is awesome. It's, it's a cool, cool tone. 
Haha, <laughs> get it? Um, all right, here she is. Hi. All right. Okay. Um, so <laughs> I <laughs> just, it was perfect timing because I rolled my blow dry all the way in and I rolled it down and I let it set and cool down just a little bit. And then I'm going to, to set this now, I'm going to roll out. And instead of flicking the brush out and just letting the ends go wherever, this is gonna be very controlled. I'm using in between my index and my middle finger, I'm gonna start to reinforce closing the cuticle with my hands and roll this at the same time, roll my brush under, okay? Then if you have a tray or anything, mine's on the opposite side, I'm going to just roll this in my hands. I don't have any product on my hands. Let me turn this actually so you guys can really get a good view. So we're rolling this. I have it over directed slightly, going, taking it back to the basics, beauty school. You decide if you want to set it on base, off base. Uh, if you want more volume, just set it off base forward or back. Okay. So I'm going to create a roll just like that. Now for these top sections, I recommend using setting clips like. This one, I'm gonna let this down. Or not this one, oh my gosh, sorry. For this top section, I actually recommend going with a longer duck bill just because these are gonna be your widest sections and it's gonna give you the most control there. Now, I wanna show you, I'm gonna clip this with another one like that. I wanna show you the difference. If you are using a long duck bill, I want you to see the difference in this one. First, Try not to set it with something like these are my favorite for sectioning my haircuts because these put more tension on it. But when you are setting the blow dry, try to go with the duck bill. It may seem standard, but like again, I, I see it out there, you guys. So just a little tip. This will not create a crease in your set. And I'm going to hold this up for you so you can see this finished. And we are. So there you go. And you're gonna, you can even use Velcro rollers if you want. I've seen that as well. And sometimes that's easier, especially for these crown sections. The way you divide each section is gonna, again, depend on density, their hair thickness. If they have not a lot of density, you're probably gonna be able to take bigger sections. Okay, so a couple of variables, brush size, density, and you're gonna just keep taking horizontal partings and work up. I'm gonna actually switch to the other mannequin for you. So you can kind of see how I have this set. Um, let me know if you want to see me actually do the motion of set, lock, and lift one more time, or if we're good to move on. I'll just show you this, this set. So you can see I have four here in the top section. So one, two, three, four, and you can kind of see through them. This girl has a lot of hair. Then I went to my side sections next. Here's the only place where I don't roll under and Let's see here. So these ones are actually, I turn my brush vertical and I set them vertically. And that's because just like a curling iron set is really gonna like kind of open up their cheekbones. Most people want their hair to curl away from their face. So that is on the sides, I have them set vertical on both sides. You can really see that. And I just set those with the littler double prong clips there. And then in the back, these subdivisions, again, are just uh, based on control. So whatever amount of hair you can control, and you'll find with the Ergo brushes, because we have a longer barrel, you can actually take less sections, which saves time, gets you in more clients. And again, this blowout should last them three days. I mean, it's the best when a client says to you after, I wish I could blow dry my hair the way you do. That's called retention uh, for anyone new. And retention is amazing. And that's what you want behind the chair. You want those clients coming back. You want them talking about your blowout. It's, uh, it's just awesome. Okay, so let's take these sure. out really quick. I know we are so short on time. Is that yeah, all right, I'm gonna, Matt? I'm actually gonna, you're, you're good. Um, I'm gonna let the, the people watching know. So I, yeah. Unlike yes. any other hair media company you will ever probably find in the current happening right now, I have a client. So, <laughs> so 
I literally cannot keep this live going. Uh, you know, she's going to finish and show you guys right now, but I can't keep this live going because I literally have a client waiting for me. So, yes. um, so it's a good thing because we're real hairdressers here doing real things. Yes. Um, but you know, I'd love for her to show it to you again. And if I could just leave it going and she wouldn't, it wouldn't stop on us, then I would, uh, do that, but I can't. So, so, uh, Sarah's going to show you the end. We're going to have Sarah back and, and we're going to fix these tech issues so that she can easily do a class. But Ergo is going to be part of the, you know, coming on this channel, doing some lives. And I promise it will be easier next time. Sarah, you're a pro. Um, this is, was not the easiest situation and I appreciate that. I don't even think she can hear me say this right now. Nope. <laughs> so I'm going to let her come back. She's going to brush that out. Um, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. And for real, my client is, is waiting. He's been here for five minutes now. Um, so yes, go to work. Thanks. Uh, but I'm going to let Sarah come back and uh, close this out, show you guys the end result. And like I said, I promise we'll do more blow dry classes and all of that. Uh, in the very near future, I'm excited to have Sarah back on here when things are not yes, as difficult. Yes, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> that looks beautiful. Yeah. So here it is, you guys. Again, uh, we are sorry for the technical difficulties, but yes, Ergo will be back. Yeah. Um, and please connect with us again. Thank you so much, Matt, for having me. Uh, it was an honor. It was truly an honor. And if you guys have any questions, please reach out to us again, Ergo Styling Tools or Sarah Mac Original. Ergo's yeah. um, Instagram is Ergo Styling, Styling Tools. Tools. Mm -hmm. um, tools and then yeah. i have yours up there too so there's ergo styling tools and then you can also follow sarah right here there we go you can find me through ergo too i yeah. am on that back side of our social media so if there's anything you want to see with Sweet. ergo just yeah let us know we are always down to put out whatever the people are looking for. So yep. thank you so much for having me, Matt. Thank you. I, I was saying that I don't think you heard me, but I, you were definitely a pro. This is not, this is the hardest live uh, ever because of cutting out and trying to remember what you're saying and all of that. I think you did a great job. I can't wait to have you guys back on here and we will work out these difficulties. Yeah. And uh, it's it'll no, be good. It's no it'll be good. worries. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but thank you so I hope much everyone has a good job uh, a good job a good day <laughs> and thanks for hanging tight all right guys we'll see uh, you guys soon yeah thank you guys so much we'll see you on the next live right here on free salon education we'll see you <laughs> see you sarah thank you guys